Adventures. Greetings all, Chook here from Chook's Outdoor Adventures. I wanted to do a video on the most common question asked to me. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many questions I get. I try to answer a lot of them, but I can't keep up with them all sometimes. But by far, uh, people message me and say, hey, Chook, I'm moving to Alaska. What uh, firearm should I buy? Should I get a 10 millimeter or 44 Magnum? What do you suggest? And I've answered a lot of them. I've helped a lot of people out. In Alaska, we have kind of a, a transient working class. Uh, a lot of military, a lot of medical professionals move up here. And I would say 80% of them leave after uh, two to three years. It's it's very common. It's a constant revolving door and the reason is because it's very depressing to live up here for some people. Uh, our winter is nine months long. There's very little light during the winter. People come up here, guys will move up here and their wives just get super depressed. It's a depressing, cold, dark place. Sometimes you fall in love with it. I happen to like it up here, but a lot of people, they'll come up here, they'll do some hunting, they'll enjoy the summers, but uh, the winters are too much for me. I'm going to move back to Ohio or Arkansas or Arizona. And so they leave after a few years. But uh, that being said, uh, I get the question, you know, what should I get? And I've had a lot of fun with it. I, my channel got a lot bigger around 2016 when I started doing 10 millimeter videos talking about how the guides use chest holsters and all my friends. I, I did the videos because me and my friends all started carrying 10 millimeters when we were out fishing, you know, fishing for salmon on the salmon stream because uh, a shotgun is better, but I'm realistically, I'm not going to carry that around for eight hours while I'm fishing. I'm going to want to have something on my chest that's convenient and that can get the job done if need be. Of course, it's not as good as a hunting rifle or a shotgun. That's really what you want for bear protection, but uh, it's been proven a 10 millimeter, 44 Magnum, even a 357 Magnum, nine millimeter has worked before. I've done videos on that. So a lot of people have questions for me. Uh, I get a kick out of it. Uh, Wander Blessed is a really cool channel on YouTube. I'll try to throw a link up to her channel here, but uh, her and her husband, moved up here and I really like them and they're the only couple I like. Her husband's ex-military, um, but we've got all these other channels that are our wonderful Alaska life. We just moved here from Portland and now we're canning salmon and help us grow viral. We moved up here to exploit Alaska and look at our cabin, our wonderful Alaska couple life. And I hate them all. I hate them except for Wanderblush. She's super cool. So check out her channel. But like I said, her husband's ex-military and, and they watched some of my videos and I was just really pleased when, you know, he had his uh, Gen 4 Glock 20, 10 millimeter with a chest holster, just like, you know, a lot of my videos. And then he bought a Ruger, to a Ruger uh, Super Ruger Red Hawk Toe Clat 454, which we'll get into. Um, another one of my buddies from Instagram is ex-military, moved up here, uh, Tango Foxtrot. Foxtrot Tango, one of those. Anyways, he got a Ruger Toklat and um, he messaged me and he's like, I bought a second one. I don't even know why. I just wanted to have two, which is pretty awesome because we'll talk about how the, you know, they're a little harder to find. Luckily, they started being produced, hopefully thanks to me, and um, you can get them again. For a while, they, they uh, the Lipsy or whatever stopped helping Ruger make them. So, uh, let's just jump into it. These might surprise you. And I always forget to talk about 12 gauge and 22. Of course, you want to have a wide range of firearms if you're planning on living up here. And you can just do so many things, protection, hunting with a 22 long rifle, good old Ruger 22, even a bolt action 22, and you need a 12 gauge shotgun. Um, so that's a given, but if, you, if you're on a budget, you only have enough for a couple firearms. These are the firearms that I suggest you get. Now, the first one uh, may surprise you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list two firearms, and then I'll also list some alternatives if, if you know, that doesn't suit you. So the first firearm 
I suggest you get if you move to Alaska is a Glock 19 Gen 5 or Gen 4. I have the Gen 5. This is a little bit different because it's got the Glock 47 slide on it and it turned it into what they call the 19L, the Glock 19 long slide. So I got a four and a half inch barrel on here. Uh, it's optic ready. I got my Surefire on there. It holds 15 rounds. I will carry 17 round mags in my pocket. Why in the heck are you suggesting people get a nine millimeter when they first lived, moved to Alaska? Well, I'm going to tell you why. So there's pe crazy people up here. Uh, some of the crappy politicians are trying to turn Anchorage, Alaska into another Portland, another Seattle. They want riots in the street. They want giant homeless camps that go for miles. They want social programs that never, they just want to turn it into a pile of uh, needle exchanges and feces all over the ground for miles. A at least that's how I feel. Maybe I'm, I'm blowing it up a little bit, uh, but I, I feel that way. Um, and so you need personal protection. Get something you can conceal carry. I also happen to have a 43X that I really like in the summertime. It's a little easier to carry than this. Um, you know, if you have a smaller frame, that might be something for you. An alternative to this, if you're older than 55 uh, and you're a revolver guy, uh, this actually happens to be the favorite firearm I have, my most prized firearm in my collection, which is a Smith & Wesson 686 seven shot 357 Magnum revolver. It is in similar size to the Glock 19 because it's compact. It can hold seven rounds. The 357 Magnum is much more powerful than a nine millimeter. You can just hand load hard cast and you can actually use this for bear protection if you had. If you, really, if you had to just pick one firearm, you could just get one of these if you really wanted to. So yeah, maybe you're a little fuddy, you prefer revolvers. This is a great choice. Uh, I'm gonna say that uh, the first firearm you should get should be a Glock 19. Um, that's just how I feel. Not only is the city uh, turning into a shithole, you go way out in the bush, you meet some crazy people. I've heard stories, I've seen people, you go out into the middle of nowhere and you'll run into this long bearded dude with long hair, he's completely antisocial. He moved up here 40 years ago to get away from people and he's just turned crazy. He will harm you and your family. Uh, he'll break into your cabin and steal your chainsaw. He hates people. Uh, you need to protect yourself from people like that. I keep hearing more and more stories. You actually have more of a chance of running into a creep like that in Alaska out in the middle of nowhere. They're so horrible uh, compared to uh, uh, a bear sometimes. So there you have it. Glock 19, that's my first firearm. The second firearm I am going to suggest is a Glock 20 Gen 5 or Gen 4 10 millimeter. Um, I like, I go back and forth. This one is not as set in stone as a big bore revolver. I think you could go either way, but you, uh, you want something that can stop a brown bear if you're out fishing or hunting or hiking or berry picking with your family. And what's cool about Alaska is even a lot of the whatever liberal hippies, uh, carry guns because they want to live. Everybody wants to live, so it's kind of cool. Uh, a lot of people have firearms here. So uh, I do have a red dot, that's not necessary. I, I happen to sometimes like optics if I can get away with it, but I do have the light on here. Now, uh, what you also are going to want is a chest holster if you're gonna be doing a lot of hiking. Um, the whole reason guides like chest holsters is because they uh, carry high here on your chest uh, and, and it, sometimes it's a little faster if you're wading through streams just to grab it like that and be able to fire at a bear. Also, uh, you know, sometimes people are falling back and you have to be careful not to shoot your foot. A lot of people have accidentally blown a big hole in their foot because they were charged by a bear. They fell back and their feet fly up as they're shooting and they blow their big toe off or they blow a big section of the middle of their foot out. So you have to always be aware and be very careful, but it's almost like a bandolier. You can have it a little lower if you want. You could have it high up on your chest. I like it kind of mid chest, but uh, you'll notice that I have the light on and why I have, uh, and that's why I sometimes 
Uh, this is for a Gen 4. I need to uh, tweak it a little bit for my Gen 5. But the, the reason why I have a weapon light on it, and I, I sometimes gravitate towards this rather than a, a, a revolver, is because in 2016, I went to Unit 16B. I shot a grizzly bear with a rifle, and then I went back to my tent, and I couldn't sleep for 24 hours because I was harassed. All the bears are starving in this area. They sent Rick Rydell out there in the 90s with an AR-10, and he, he uh, took out a whole bunch of them, and everybody hated him for it. I loved him for it because the bears are literally eating each other. They're skinny and, and there's just no food and the bears are just like cannibalizing each other. But anyways, this starving black bear harassed me for 24 hours. I couldn't sleep, uh, smashed my tent, smashed my cooler, ate all my food. Uh, luckily, I had cell service at this fishing cabin uh, that was set up for oil workers and the, the airplane came and got me early. But uh, I came off the four-wheeler one night. I had just shot my brown bear. I was all excited, and then I noticed my tent was ripped open. I was like, ah, that stupid bear again. Um, and even though it was June, and it was like almost solstice, but, uh, and, and there was some twilight in the sky, you know, at 1 a.m., uh, the tree line was completely pitch black. You could see nothing. I walked around my tent, uh, pulled out my 44 Magnum. I had the Ruger uh, Red Hawk Alaskan, your snub nose 44 Magnum, another great choice. Um, and uh, this bear was 10 feet away from me, growling, slapping the, the gravel with his claws. And I just unloaded my 44 Magnum. I missed. He went running off into the woods. I could hear him crushing logs. If I had had something like this with a weapon light, see, I had no light on that revolver. If I had a weapon light, this would have been on. I would have like just lit him up. I would have come home with two bears instead of one, a black bear and a brown bear. So I think a chest holster and a weapon light is uh, important. So those are my two suggestions, the Glock 19 or a 357 Magnum compact holster uh, revolver and a Glock 20 Gen 4, Gen 5, uh, 10 millimeter. However, if you are older than 55 or you were a really big guy and you're a good shot with a revolver, I'm going to say get something like this. Now, Chuck agrees with me. He says this is the best uh, bear defense revolver uh, you could buy in Alaska, you know, for bear protection. This is the Ruger Super Red Hawk Toklat 454 Consul. It is empty and uh, this is just a hard hitting revolver. Uh, it's got a little bit of a longer five inch barrel and uh, with the revolver, I don't like the Kydex chest holsters. I like something nice in leather like this. This is a just in case holster. Check out justincase.com for every holster he sends me for free. I buy another one of his uh, just because I love them so much. He can put a snakeskin panel on it. They're just really cool Western looking traditional holsters. Now this is also a chest holster. Some people wear them like bandoliers down here, which I've done. Some people like them really high on the chest, but you want something that can stop a brown bear. This obviously has more power than a 10 millimeter but I personally cannot get as many shots off. I'll get one, I'll be lucky to get two shots off at a charging bear. Now that being said, sometimes there's nothing that you can do. Uh, sometimes when a really angry brown bear uh, wants to charge you, he'll what they do is they circle around and this is if you're in thick trees. I don't even have it in my holster. If I'm going through thick willows, uh, on a trail, I've got my pistol out because what they do is they go around, they try to get downwind of you, and they charge you at 35 miles an hour uh, at your side, and they just blow through everything, and then they just bite you and claw you, kill you, sometimes eat you, sometimes just maim you. Uh, but when a, a really, you've got a few seconds. So if you're a really good shot, pick the revolver. Um, if you're a little unsure, I would go with the semi-auto. You'll get more shots off. But uh, check out my video about uh, the study on handguns. It, it can be done. It's not ideal, but you can save your life with a handgun. So for the record, I am saying a Glock 19 9 millimeter because of all the shit bags that are up here um, to protect yourself and your family. And then for uh, the woods, a 10 millimeter um, 
Glock 20. Uh, XDM is a great choice. I'm also a big fan. I lean towards the FN510 Tactical. I'm picking up the MRD uh, today, actually, and I'm do some videos on that. But um, those are my choices. Uh, also, additionally, instead of those, you can get a couple revolvers. You get a nice Smith & Wesson 686. I think this is the greatest 357 Magnum revolver. Besides that Colt Python that Rick Grimes carried, uh, this is the best revolver I think ever made. And uh, this is what I would choose also. A big bore, 44 Magnum, 500 Smith & Wesson, or a 454 like I have. So thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you can, buy a Chook t-shirt. I've got my Teespring store underneath the videos here and become a patron if you can. I appreciate all of you. It's Chook, your friend the field. My name is Chook. I like to trade my guns just for fun, but now I have none. Oh, look at Chuck my bear, but I don't care. I got a 10 millimeter. Shoot out adventures. Why don't you almost die?